Hello and welcome back to my podcast, uh, Our Voice, Our our Choice. This is episode six, um, uh, covering the topic, uh, Healthy healthy Living, part two. Uh, and my, my guest speaker that I have with me today is Dan Marshall from Corfit, Newcastle. G'day, Dan. How g'day. are you? G'day, Aaron. I'm good, mate. Thanks for having me. Cool, no worries. Thank you for agreeing to be on my podcast. <laughs> mate, any time, mate. Looking forward to it. Pretty cool. So, um, Dan, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself and um, Corfit Newcastle? Yeah, sure. So, a bit about myself. Wow. Um, where do I start? So, uh, for me, uh, I've been in Newcastle, lived in Newcastle for about 25 years now. I was born and raised in Sydney, um, moved around a little bit when I was a kid, um, but uh, yeah, Newcastle's now my home and um, I've got my, my beautiful wife, Ali, um, who is now three months pregnant, um, so expecting our first child in June, which is exciting. Uh, we've got two dogs and two cats, so we've had fur babies for a long time, so now a real baby coming along, so we're a bit scared, but looking forward to that. And um, obviously, you know, we um, we have another baby, which is our business here at CoreFit, and, you know, we're really um, passionate about helping people with their health, and we've done it now for uh, 11 years here at CoreFit, and I've been in the industry for about 15 years, and um, I was kind of before that in retail and whatnot, and I've grown up, grown up playing sports, rugby, I'm a really passionate kind of sport lover um, I'm a Knights fan I know you're a Raiders fan unfortunately mate but um, that's okay and um, yeah, yeah and we so won't, f- we won't go in there. <laughs> so for me my passions you know are certainly uh, you know sport um, hanging out with family and friends and just and just helping people with their health you know it's something we really love doing so that's kind of me in a nutshell uh, that, that. That's that's cool, and um, congrats to you and you and uh, you and Ali on ex- um, you expecting your first child. Thanks, mate. Appreciate um, it. Got you got any tips? No, no. <laughs> no. I'm a, I'm a godfather, and that's uh, that's about it. And godfather to me niece, and I have helped raise her, but um, I've only really sort of helped out here here and there just <laughs> really kind of done more the uncle thing really yeah, but the, um, the fun uncle that's right uh i try to be i try to because my my niece has got level two autism so she um i kind of when she flips out or 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 whatever i'm i got this kind of like special understanding of how to like uh, I'm going to use the words deal with us. It's not the best terminology, but um, um, I know it's a bit early, but um, a bit early to ask you, Dan, but have you got any names, any names picked out? Oh, I haven't. No, or we haven't, I should say. No, not yet. We actually don't even know the sex of the baby yet. So I uh, don't know whether we'll find out or whether we'll keep it a surprise. Not not sure yet, but... Um, uh, maybe Aaron Jr. or something like that, Ugh. maybe, hey? hey? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. No, I don't know yet, mate. We'll have, we'll have a look. Um, God, there's so many names these days. I mean, who knows? But yeah, we'll come up with something. I, can, I know that. We'll, we'll come up with something. I just don't know what. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of... And there's and there's like unusual names now. They look like they just like plucked them out of the air or out of the <laughs> sky too. you just like... Yeah, I think you just look at an object and point at it and go, Fridge. That sounds like a good one. Let's go with fridge. <laughs> well, it's like um, <laughs> um, I think it's Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter. They um, sh- she named named her Apple or, Apple, or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yep, yep. I'm like poor, poor thing. <laughs> that might that's probably going to be a normal name though, mate. In in ten fifteen years, that like Stevens and Johns will probably be the old old people out. <laughs> yeah, no, they'll probably start, wouldn't they? Say, oh, my name, my name's. Steve or Mark or John, I go pull this funny face or something. Go, that's that, a that's funny old. name. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, that, that's 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 really cool. I'm I'm happy for you, Dan. I uh, really am. Um, Thanks, mate. Uh, 
why did you why why did you decide to become a, a personal trainer? That's a good question. Um, so, for me, the the my, my certificate started when I was pretty much twenty years old. That's when I did my I guess first certificate in the industry. But I suppose my probably my my story my journey started much earlier. So, I I kind of grew up being active, um, playing sport, but I wasn't always a healthy kid. Um, To give you a bit of a backstory, so when I was younger, um, I struggled with a few things health-wise, like I was asthmatic, I was, you know, hospitalized as a kid multiple times with asthma. I didn't have anything life-threatening or anything, like I used to struggle with allergies and eczema and all these different things. I used to get horrible pains in the stomach growing up a lot. Anyway, so whilst I was active and played sport and always out playing with my mates and stuff, I know that as I got older and started to understand a bit more about, when I reflect back and think about my food habits, I was probably one of the unhealthiest people I I know, to be honest, um, back then. So growing up into high school, when I moved up here for high school, um, living with my mum, yeah, I um, like she would always, I just remember she used to always make me lunches. Sorry, mum, if you're listening. Um, She used to make me my lunches to school and I'd just, I'd never eat them. And I'd always like, you know, scrounge around and find some money to go get the finger bun or whatever I had such a sweet tooth growing up and so growing up I I, I formed really bad habits um, with my nutrition I remember I used to go to a school in Newcastle called Katara High School and we used to as part of that I used to catch a public bus get off on the bus walk through what we used to call Garden City back in the day you know Westfield Katara and you know there was Coles there was like Wendy's places like this were kind of open and I'd, I'd, I'd get a whole a two litre bottle of Coke, walk through, take it to school, drink, you know, all the mates would go, oh, you got Coke, share it around, you know. Um, or I'd get the Wendy shake or I'd, you know, I remember one day I after school I went to Donut King. I still remember it. I got like a six pack of donuts before football training, ate them all, went to football training and it was obviously sick. You know, it didn't work well. But I, I, I really had a sweet tooth growing up. And as I got older and I got kind of to the age about 17, 18, I, I started to notice my, my energy was getting worse I was losing weight I was really pale um but you kind of you just think it's normal I suppose and you kind of keep keep getting on with it I guess and I used to get home from school and I find myself just being exhausted having to go to sleep um you know and just really struggling with general day-to-day energy and when I hit the age of 19 I fell into a real hole and um I got to the point where I was working in retail at the time and I had to take a couple of months off work um, and I had to stop playing rugby, which was my passion at the time. And I needed to try figure out what was happening to me. And and so it got to the point where I'd be struggling to get out of the house. I'd, there'd be days where I just kind of wouldn't, wouldn't get out. And that was hard for me because I was a pretty social kind of person and I became quite recluse. My confidence was dropping and, um, you know, I was starting to question what's going on. Something isn't right. And so my mum was a great help. I was living with her at the time. She was invested in, you know, obviously trying to help me get a solution to what was happening. But it took a while for me to get there. And through that point, I kind of dropped into a bit of depression and, um, you know, started on some medication and different things just to try and help me feel better. My mood, which was slipping. So long story short, I went to a few th- places to try and figure out what was happening. And uh, for example, I got tested for diabetes, but I didn't have that, which was good. I got tested for chronic fatigue. It wasn't that. Um, I got different scratch tests done for allergies and certain things. But what ended up happening is I went to a um, – the GP ended up pointing me in the direction of what they call a gastroenterologist, like someone that looks into your your bowel and your intestine and stuff like that. And so I ended up getting – this is about 19 years old. I ended up getting a a colonoscopy and a gastroscopy, which if you've ever had one of them, they're amazing, especially the prep, the prep work. I'm only joking. They're horrible. (laughs) You've got to be close to a toilet before you uh, go to one of those um, surgeries. But essentially what happened is they took a biopsy of my, of my my bowel and my intestine and whatnot. And they found out that I actually had a thing called celiac disease, which was, which is basically like a, and intolerance to wheat and gluten and whatnot. So, you know, it's a lot more prevalent now. But back then, talking 20, 20 years ago or so, there wasn't as much known about it. And I certainly didn't know anything about it. All I remember thinking is, I'm, I can't drink beer anymore. You know, I can't eat bread anymore. Oh, my God. Like, seriously, my life's over, you know. But what it did do is it forced me to actually have a look at what was happening and how I was looking after myself. And I wasn't looking after myself. I was partying a lot. I was not sleeping well enough. Um, You know, I was eating the wrong things. And so 
from there, I guess I, I, I developed a really deep curiosity around food, first of all. And after a couple of weeks of going on a diet and eliminating some things out, I started to feel better. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how, how quickly things changed for me in terms of how I felt, my mood. I started to put on some weight. My color came back into my skin. Um, and I was like, man, how, how, does, how does that have such an effect on, on me, what's going in my mouth? So then what from there happened, mate, is I, I, I essentially started exercising a little bit more regularly, structured stuff. I was only really playing sport at the time. I wasn't doing any structured exercise for myself. But I started kind of wanting to get into the gym a bit more moving a bit more because it f- made me feel better and it gave me some confidence back and then from there it wasn't long after that maybe six months or so that I decided that you know maybe I can help other people you know who have been struggling with their health so I, I kind of went and did my certificate in fitness um, started down the journey when I was about 20 and now I'm really fortunate and lucky to still be doing it you know all these years later and we've helped help thousands of people you know in that time and it's been pretty cool and it's helped me be able to you know facilitate a, a passion that I've I've loved doing you know which is which is even luckier so that's what got me into the industry I, mean, I think if I didn't fall crook it was probably the best thing that happened to me was actually becoming unwell because it forced me to wake up and actually take some action for myself which led me down the path of helping other people yeah long long answer <laughs> yeah. oh it, it was Dan it was it was it was a great answer and it's it's amazing how like small positive changes can make such a big difference. Um, my 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 story when I was teens and and up to the age of about I think it was twenty one. I was I was a bit the opposite. I was uh, I was. I was I was exercising all the time. I was training all the time because I was playing elite level basketball, uh, and I was eating pretty well. I mean, I would still, you know, I must admit, gleefully chow down on the on the not so good foods. But because I had such, which helped to such a fast metabolism, it just never showed up until it unfortunately slowed down and I filled outwards um but yeah it's so it's funny because we've kind of gone opposite ways once we've hit that like 20 years of age mark you've gone the 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 healthy direction and I've kind of gone the 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 other direction which is uh and I which you know I'm really N- not proud of myself for heading that way and i i think in 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 one or a few discussions you and i have had previously i've 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 mentioned that i think yep um yep. so yeah i i personally would like to get back to the the old me which was it was lean healthy athletic uh you know i could you know, i i was only six one but i could jump up and dunk a basketball wow um so um yeah it's um your story um is great mine not so but well, mate, I think yeah, you know, everyone's got a different story, and health and fitness is hard. You know, it's hard. It's not easy, and um, there's always setbacks. And my, I, I, mine hasn't been a linear journey at all. I've had roller coaster moments up and down, and it's the same for everyone, mate. And so, you know, it's just about trying to figure out what it is you want, and then find what the solution that you feel like you enjoy doing that 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 you can look after yourself so it doesn't feel like a chore, I suppose. But getting a support system around you, mate, the best advice I can give anyone is you've got to get a support system around you, um, whether that's someone like what we do or your family or your friends or people that can actually challenge you and push you to, in a, in a, in a nice way though, you know what I mean, in a respectful way, to say, hey, like, mate, you know, you, you've got it in you and people that believe in you, you know, to be able to actually say, you know, there's nothing, there's no reason you can't achieve something. There's no reason you can't improve your health. Um, yeah, 
having we haven't done it. I mean, I, I wouldn't be here still having been active for 20 years if I didn't have people around me that I could lean on. You know, it's too hard to do it yourself, I believe. Yeah, a really small percentage of people can really do it, go it alone. Most people need help, and I'm one of those people too. Yeah, uh, well, I'm. Uh, I really do believe I do have those people around me. Um, uh, and I actually seem to keep adding to that <laughs> group of people like yourself and um, Brooke, you one of your, your, your um, one of one of your your personal trainers. I love training with her. She's um she's firm but fair she's a bit cheeky too but <laughs> um we'll leave it at that and i but i never would have known about core fit newcastle if it wasn't for my um physio oh benny uh ben. yeah, yeah ben yeah, ben yeah, hutton he yep. he originally um recommended this gym called um oh, i think it was called the M- manisha fitness a s- something like that and I went and had a like a you know one of those uh, uh, consultation meetings and I, n- I never went I never went through I never um, joined up with them because they were way if I can say this they were way too expensive um, to join and train there and so I I just I went back to to um Ben good old Ben, he probably won't wanna hear me saying that, but uh and then he yeah, he said, Oh well uh there's this other there's this other gym called Core Fit and they're um uh and they're the the people that pr- the people that run it are pretty awesome and I'm like Yeah, cool, I'll let's give them a try and I came uh, I had a chat with you over the phone and then in person and then just just things uh, about core fit uh, uh, all of it just felt it it just felt right um like to be I have felt that with a, a like a another gym a uh, a disability specialty gym called Tactics Training, and I have to say they're 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 awesome too. And the the guy that uh, owns and operates it, Sean Altram, he's a another champion who I've been lucky enough to interview in his podcast and well, and he's trainers. They're all pretty cool too. Um, but. Yeah, it's just getting back to how small things can make such a big mm. difference. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, in saying that, the the next question I have I have for you, Dan, is um, why is it important to have a a healthy healthy body and mind? Ooh. Asking the deep questions here, mate. Yeah, I well, like it. I, I like I'm, it. I'm after the deep answers. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it important to have a healthy body and healthy mind? Um, do you know what? I, I think I can only answer that from my perspective. I think I've got an opinion on it, but I think at the end of the day, each everyone's got their own motivations and thoughts around why they should be healthy. I think for me it's important because – it helps. I think it really helps with your coping mechanisms, if I'm honest. You know, life's th- life throws a lot at people. There's a lot of different challenges. You know, I'll, I'll share an example of one of the, a lady who we just had our Christmas party recently. Um, we give out awards and recognize people who've done really great things for the year. And one of our members has been with us for 10 years. You know, we've been operating for 11 and we've got a couple of members who've been with us for 10 years. And, uh, in, you got to understand that's that's pretty special. Um, a lot of people struggle to to maintain their health for weeks and months, you know, and so it's really really kind of fantastic that someone can be able to do something consistently for ten years. But if you if you ask that person, 
you know, what, why, you, why is it important to you? It's probably going to be a different answer to me. I think for me, you know, that lady particularly, she's had so many setbacks and different challenges. She's run a business. She's had to sell the business. She's had issues with staff. She's had issues with her own health. She had an accident on a bike. She was in hospital in intensive care. She, you know, there's all these different things that get thrown at people along the journey of health and fitness. And so for me, I find it helps me. I, yes, I, I like feeling good physically, but for me, it, when it, it used to be more physical when I'm young, when I was younger, and I think that's the case for most people. When you're younger, you know, it's about the it's about the look a little bit more. You know what I mean? And you look a bit good, and you feel a bit, and all that kind of stuff. But I think as you get older, and you probably get a bit wiser, it, it becomes more about the mental side of it. And particularly for people we help here, you know, most of them are mums, dads. Um, they might be business owners, they're nurses, they're, you know, they're people that, you know, work in service-based industries where they're helping other people. And I think well, you've got to give back to yourself a bit too. And I think health is one of those things where you put a bit, you invest a bit of time in yourself, you give back to yourself. There's a great quote, the best, um, what is, oh, now I've forgotten the quote. That'd be great, wouldn't it? But hang on, I'll get it. Um, the best investment you can make is the one you're making yourself, like the one that returns the best dividend. And I, I really believe that. Um, if you look after yourself first and foremost, then you're able to look after other people better. You know, a perfect example is mums. Like we get a lot of mums here and a lot of them get mum guilt. And you know, you know mum guilt? Have you heard of that? Uh, I no, I don't. I don't it's, think so. It's pretty much like you know, um, <clears throat> a lot of mums, right? Like their role once they have a child is to obviously be there for their child, be there for their family. And so, a lot of the time, what happens is, you know, I know this from having conversations with hundreds and hundreds of mums over the last ten years. You know, in that they they feel really guilty because they're then putting time aside for themselves. And because they feel like they should be there for others. And so that's such a, a perfect example because, you know, we've had so many mums, once they start the program or they start exercising, they go, oh my God, why didn't I didn't know to do this earlier? Because then it allows them to actually take, take some time, put it into themselves, make themselves feel better, empower them. And then they're able to be, you know, generally better, better mums, better partners, better family members, because they're actually happier within themselves. And I think that's really important. Um, to give back to yourself a little bit, I think we all um, we all do a great job of um, being there for others. But if we, if you're not if you can't serve yourself first and foremost, then it's hard to serve other people and um, you know and be the best version of you. I believe so. For me, I think mate, it's more about handling the stresses of of different challenges, but it, being able to cope better, reducing stress, feeling good in yourself just from moving. You know, without putting any have have to put any extra pressure on yourself to be perfect or look a certain way or be a certain number on a scale. Those things are great if you want to do that. But I think ultimately it's about just being able to cope with life's crap that comes at you sometimes. And I think being healthy and having a strong mind helps you with that. It builds resilience. It really does. Yeah. That's what I think anyway. <laughs> what about you? Um... Oh, I've put Damn, on that's a, um, <laughs> uh, that, that's a pretty that's a pretty good question, and it's well, I'll get, that, I'll, your uh, answer is probably different to mine. Uh, you know and all I mean? and all uh, and all you've asked is um, um, is what a what what's my opinion on it? And I, uh, it would be. Uh, it would be it it would be it what you you said but um uh, but shorter <laughs> um I love it uh yeah i don't even know uh, it's terrible how to um how how to put it in put it into words really yeah, i know what you mean mate it can be tough to contextualize an answer like that, can't it, sometimes? If I was to succinctly put it into three words and you said to me, Dan, you, know, you can only say the answer in three words, I'd probably say, why is it important? I'd say better coping mechanisms. That'd be my three words. 
I reckon, or build more resilience. I think that's the most important thing. Exercise allows you to build more resilience in your mind, you know, and I think that's important for dealing with all of life stresses. Yeah. No, I I think a healthy body, healthy mind. I think it's it's going to help you. Uh, it's going to help you cope massively with um with uh with today's struggles. Um, you know, you're healthy in the healthy in the mind. You're strong in the mind. You're resilient. You're not much is going to bother you really. Unless it's something fairly extreme, in my opinion, and in the body, you um, the same thing. You 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 you're fit. You're strong. Again, you're resilient. You, res- you know, yeah, you're resilient, tough. Um, and that's and that again is going to help you, help you massively as massively as well it's gonna make it's gonna make dealing with um today's struggles i i i I say that those words again but it's gonna make them easier to deal with yeah that's right it doesn't mean they go away they're still they're all gonna always be there annoy annoyingly but you can't just, you know, you know, wave a magic wand and say, be, <laughs> be gone. No, unfortunately That would not. be great, but it's just fairy tales. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's great, mate. I, I totally agree. Um, just the, if we can, um, um, like moving on the, to the, the good old next question is, uh, what what advice do you have for someone looking to... To join a gym or looking to start exercising regularly, whether that be um, at home or at a park. Yeah, great question, mate. So I think the the best advice I have for someone wanting to start, firstly, I'll just say just start. Don't overthink it. Um, don't try to get all your ducks in a row before you start. I think if... Uh, there's two bits of advice. First of all, could you give you an example? We trained, uh, this lady stands out. We trained a lady um, who lost about 30 kilos over about an 18 month period, right? Completely changed her life for the better. Um, healthy, you know, massive, massive transformation. And once she lost that weight, she did a video for us and we asked, we asked her the same question in terms of what would you say to someone who's starting? What would you say to someone who's starting to help them take that next step which can be a scary step and she said just just start don't think about it just start and she said from her perspective you know if I'd waited another 12 or 18 months I wouldn't be where I am right now and so I think it's really it's it's a it's, it can be scary taking that step or asking for help um you know or thinking oh my god I'm stepping into somewhere am I going to belong in this place or wherever it is and that takes courage. It really does take some courage. But if you have to just muster that little bit of courage to reach out to somewhere and ask a question, then you never know where that might lead. Um, I think my second piece of, piece of advice is just try find something that's the right fit for you. So, for example, you said training in a park. Fantastic. Like, we're not the right fit for everybody. You know, that's I know that. And, you know, some people are going to fit better in a big gym who can go it alone some people the big gym isn't for them like if you've been a member of a big gym for 12 months and you've gone three times <laughs> i've got advice the big gym isn't for you like you need more support um but if you're going regularly and you're doing it on your own fantastic the big gym's for you um smaller gyms like us we're for people who need a little bit more hand holding they need a bit more accountability motivation initially just to get them started and get some confidence up and for some people they love going outdoors right they're outdoorsy people so there's nothing wrong with going and just getting doing some running or cycling or you know yoga or tai chi i just think it's about finding what you love finding what you enjoy because the last thing you want is you don't want exercise to be a chore and a boring mundane thing that you feel like oh my god i've got to get up and do this and i you know that's, that's, I think, my biggest advice, mate. Find somewhere where you enjoy doing and even better than that, if you have a sense of belonging at that place and there's a community involved and you can meet people and have friendships, hey, that makes it even more fun as well. 
Well, that's great, Dan. I have um that in the past has been my fears is um you know, will I be welcomed, you know, at this at this gym? Um uh the um I think like the pro the procrastinating was um was it was a problem for me because I would I would say um yeah I've got to start doing something got to s- start training changing my ways but I would keep putting it off um a big big barrier for me over the years has been that I that I find training on my own boring um I can't I struggle to find the motivation to train on my own um yeah I, it's a it's 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 a real struggle cuz I just think oh training on my own uh, not fun. I mean, sure, you you can put on you know some tunes or something, some music, and listen to it. But I tried that, and um, I I'd, I'd actually get I'd get distracted, you know, by the music themselves. I'd you know instead of doing doing my program, you know, so some some push ups, some squats, some ab crunches, and um, tricep dips, and and so on. I'd find myself, you know, just sitting or standing there you know bopping along to the music and stuff and um and you know that's the only thing that's going to work is maybe your neck muscles and that but <laughs> become a bit of dancer um no i can't dance to save myself <laughs> but um yeah that that's pretty darn good advice yeah i i i reckon that too and i mean i I was happy that I did jump in and start doing some training, but because of certain circumstances, I've unfortunately had to stop it. And even though I was given um, a pretty good, like, um, do it, train at home, sorry, program, I because I'm there doing it on my own, I struggled, as I said, to find the motivation to do it. So I'm... Um, Basically, when I can, I'm going to uh, get back into the gym. Hopefully, I'm looking at, um, as as I mentioned to you before this interview started, doing small group fitness sessions, and I reckon that'll be fun because I'll get to meet new people and you know, give the trainers a bit of cheek in that and... Um, I just hate if I give them cheat, they don't make me train any harder than... <laughs> That's right, mate. But, uh, yeah. But, um, my next wonderful question I have for you is... Um, kind of the opposite what advice do you have for someone who is struggling with uh motivation to uh sorry the motivation to continue to continue their training okay great question um i have a theory i have a theory on this and so definitely like motivation is a funny thing um I'll give you two sides of the story and I'll tell you a bit of an example. I'll share an example from my, my own story. So mo- look, you want to think about motivation as fuel. Okay. Like fuel you put in a car. Okay. Motivation is short term fuel. That's all it is. It's only going to get you a short distance. Okay. So it's never, you, you should, it's, you should never have to rely on motivation all the time to be the thing that's going to get you out of bed because no one is perpetually motivated all the time. And it might look like that when you look at, you know, magazines and different fad diets, but it's just not true. And I, I'm testament to that. I'm not motivated all the time. Some days I can't be freaked getting up and exercising. 
And it's the same for the coaches here and it's the same for many people. So there's day, you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. And you're going to have days where, you know, you've got like the, on one side of your shoulder, you've got the angel, which is me, <laughs> saying, come on, let's go, let's get to your session. You know? On the other side, you've got the devil going, oh, I can't be bothered this morning, it's too cold outside, I'm sore from yesterday, I can't be bothered, let's go back to bed, right? We've all got that voice, internal voice dialogue going on and it's no different for us. And anyone that tells you they don't, honestly isn't telling the truth so there are some people who can discipline themselves more so really discipline is what you need not motivation discipline is the thing that's going to help you but i'm going to share a bit of a story what i believe is the is the fact here because if i if i said to you aaron all right mate we're gonna meet tomorrow morning at the beach it's winter we're meeting at the beach at 4 a.m all right and you're going to go there and i'm not going to be there but i'm counting on you to get there and do the workout and just let me know how you go. What are the odds of you getting there at 4 a.m. without me? Uh, not not They're not very great, likely. They? They're not likely. What if I said to you, all right, Aaron, you're going to meet me tomorrow at the uh, at the beach, 4 a.m., same scenario. I'm not going to be there, but there's going to be a million dollars in a in a treasure chest for you. And if you turn up, that million dollars is yours. What do you reckon is going to happen? You're going to be more likely to turn up? I reckon so. Why is that? Because you're motivated by the money, right? Yeah? The money's the motivation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, again, it's a short-term thing. The money's there for you on that short-term thing. The money's not always going to be there for you. So, what you have to find, for anyone out there struggling with motivation, is you've got to find your purpose. We call this, I call it your health and fitness purpose or your internal inspiration. So, I guess to help contextualize it, I'll give you a bit of a story um, for me personally. It's one of the questions we ask any new person who comes in here when they do their induction with us. What is your deep why? It's, we call it your deep why. So, for me, I've got kind of two two things that keep me going when motivation is low. So number one, I shared my story earlier. Number one for me is I'm, I'm a bit scared of going back to where I was. So I know what it was like to feel like crap, I suppose. I know what it was like to feel unhealthy, um, not my best. And I think for me, I've over 20 years of being pretty consistent with looking after myself since that period, I've kind of almost drawn like a a lineage between exercise and, and eating better and feeling better so that if I stop those things in my head, I'm like, well, I'm going to go back to where I was and I don't want to go back there. And I'm a bit scared of that. So that's, that's a bit of a purpose for me. It's not motive. I guess it is a bit of motivation, but I call that kind of my purpose. Secondly, I also want to be, you know, when you sometimes on the news or whatever, you see one of those oldies, I'll say oldies, they might be in 80, 90, 100, maybe they're jumping out of an aeroplane or they're doing an aerobics class or something and they're completely against the mould of what we think old people should be. Like that stereotypical, you're in a home or you're on, you're on a ventilator waiting to die, burden to your family or you you know, you, you can't walk because you you know, haven't looked after yourself your whole life and you get to that age of 60, 70, 80 and you start having all these health issues. Like I don't want that to be me. I don't want to be a burden to my family. I want to be able to look, you know, be with grandkids hopefully when I'm older. I want to be able to do stuff as I get older. And I know that's going to be limited because I'm going to get older, but I want to be able to be that person who can actually still hopefully go away and enjoy myself because I've taken the time to look after myself week in, week out throughout my life. So for me, I play the long game and that's my other purpose. I want to, I want to live to 100. I want to be hopefully a healthy 100, you know. So for me to do that, I need to keep consistent. Um. And then what that means, mate, is that when there's days where I can't be bothered, which there certainly are, plenty of them, I know that if I just, I've conditioned myself now that if I just show up, if I just turn up for myself, show up for myself first and foremost, and start, that I always, not one, I've never had one exercise workout where I've always gone, oh, that was a, that was a waste of time. <laughs> I always feel better for it at the end. So I focus on the end on the end of it. And I, I guess I, I, make, I make myself through discipline, get there and focus on it. So for me, I feel like motivation, motivation is a thing which gets talked about a lot. But honestly, when it comes to being healthy, if you don't have a strong enough purpose, a strong enough why and understanding around what you've all got a goal, the goal is the motivation, but the underlying purpose of that should be something that really resonates with you. And if you, the, the, the digging you deep into that, 
and understand that, the more powerful it is, the more, honestly, the more successful you'll be in the long run with health. Because when shit hits the fan, sorry for swearing, but when when the proverbial, proverbial shit hits the fan, which it will, we talked about the challenges that come up in life, when things get hard and you don't have a deep enough why, it's too easy to quit. It's too easy to give up. And you might say, oh, I'm just not motivated. Yeah, but motivation, it's an excuse. It's not actually a thing. It's just a, it's a, it's a thing that we feel every now and again in certain ways, but it should never be a long lasting thing. So there are ways you can boost your motivation. I'll go through those now. So motivation can be really boosted by, let's say, let's say Aaron, you're wanting to, you know, get healthy. All right, great. What's some ways you can boost your motivation? Mate, let's book you into some type of event. Like, hey, let's say you want to get better at running. All right, let's book in this event next year. You're going to do the 10-kilometer fun run or whatever in April. Bang, you've booked it in. Now what happens? Oh, shit, I better start training. <laughs> I better start working towards that because I've got a motivation to work towards, right? Another way you can boost motivation, you mentioned it before, putting some tunes on, listening to something you love, getting around people who motivate you, like small group, like you said, or group fitness, like if you like that environment, um, training with a friend, someone who you can enjoy exercising with. Those are little motivational tools, but you're still going to have days where you can't be bothered. And what do you do on those days is the question. That's what makes or breaks people. That's where you have to have a fitness purpose. I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it certainly does. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we're going deep here. We're going deep. Oh, yeah. that's good. Uh, as I said, we're after we're we're after the good deep stuff. Find your deep why. Find your um, deep why. Could we could like please correct me if I'm wrong, Dan? But could you say uh, your deep whys are uh, partially driven by by fear? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. A hundred percent, mate. I think there's a there's a fear for me of not wanting to go back and feeling unhealthy. Like I get agitated now when I don't exercise in a way, which probably isn't great. But I, I'm I'm also kind to myself. Like I've learned to be. I'm not a perfectionist. I probably once was when I was younger, but now I'm like, like for me, if I can exercise four days a week, that's my sweet spot. Love that. If I do more, great. You know, if I get three or two in in a week, no worries, all good. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to throw a tanty. I'm just going to say, well, that's okay. It is what it is. And next week I'm back on, you know. Um, if I go away on holidays, I'm not stressed about exercising. I'm going to go and enjoy my holiday. I'm going to eat a little bit worse than what I normally do. That's okay. But I know that I've, I've conditioned myself to come back and I'll be getting back into it, you know. So it's really important out there that if you have a bad week or you fall off the rails for a day, it's that's okay. Like your health's with you as long as you're alive. So unless you're planning on leaving the world tomorrow, <laughs> which none of us are, be patient. Like, do you know what? There's a the best book I can recommend if you like if you like reading out there or you, or listening to audio books. There's a great book called Atomic Habits by a fellow called James Clear. And if you're wanting to improve the habits of how you do things on a daily or weekly basis to help you condition yourself better when it comes to this stuff, that's probably the best book I've ever ever read. And so those kind of books and things like that who have walked the path, people like that have walked the path and can help you. Um, it might just, you might just learn one thing from it, which changes the trajectory of how you do things in a positive way, you know. So, yeah, that's a great book. But definitely for me, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I think, motivated or inspired by a bit of fear there. Yeah, not wanting to go back and not wanting to get older and be like stereotyp stereotypical kind of, old person if that makes sense which sounds probably bad but i just i know for me i want to be able to do more things as i get older and hopefully live a a long a, a sustainable longevity lifestyle you know yeah be active uh awesome. we'll see <laughs> I, I think the um i think the stereotyping of elderly people that's a that's a nicer way to um a uh, nicer way to to, to call the to, to to call them than oldies, <laughs> but, but, um, like the mature age, the mature age. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah, they still get the the elderly still get stereotyped. Oh, you, yeah, it's uh, sad. Uh, you're you know you're seventy five. Oh, you should be sitting around home watching TV or listening to the radio or. 
you know, or you know, knit, you know, knitting or something, and um, you know, and yet, you know, you see these, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty, sixty, seventy, eighty-year-old people, as you said, who were, you know, they're out with their friends, they're they're walking, um, you know, they they're at the gym, and um, and you know. I, I have to admit, I admire them greatly. I'm just like, good on you. Respect, yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember I actually, an inc- um, I was going to say incident. That's not the right word. Um, um, uh, once, yeah, once I, um, I saw my. I, I I guess they were, you know, sixty sixty five plus in in age and you know, they were you know, they were walking, they were power walking, really swinging the arms and they were really you know, really moving along and I was just like I thought that that that's great to see. I mean I'm I'm struggling to even do that at the moment and I'm um which for me, which was a bit of a you know, I was happy for them, but not so for myself. But, um, sorry. You're right, mate. Um, just, just on that, can I add one more thing? Yeah. One of the things I think too, mate, is, um, you mentioned about fear driving me. I just, I just thought about something else. It's like our, our kind of, I guess our, our mission here of what we do here and why we exist is to really help our members be able to, you know, hopefully live and grow old free from preventable disease, you know, and, and feel happy and comfortable within themselves. Now, there's no, obviously, you know, no one has a, a crystal ball to say this is exactly what's going to happen in the future, but... your <laughs> future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I do believe that if you, um, if you put in the time to look after yourself, you know, things, things will hopefully... You create your own luck in that way, but... I, I tell the story of my auntie. My auntie, my auntie passed away. Um, we all probably know someone who's been touched with cancer. Unfortunately, my auntie passed yes, away. Yes, yes. Um, um, c- couple, a couple of our family members have, and it, uh, it, re- it, 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 so it's, it, it really stung. because uh, one of them, um. To yeah, she had a she had the cancer in her in a jaw, I think, and she had an operation to move remove it. But um, I think they didn't get all of it, and it or they did get all of it, but it came back, and it was um like far more aggressive, and um like she. she, she it's not nice terminology, but she went like really quickly, uh, and it, you know, and she was, you know, she was she was a damn good lady too. Um, she was one of my mum's, one of my sorry, one of my dad's dad's sister, Janice. She was a, I think you would have liked her, Dan. She was a, a real character, uh, and she was only like fifty seven, fifty eight. Um, and the other person just quick is, um, is my, my grandfather, um, a man who I was extremely close to. He, uh, he passed away of lung cancer. Like he, he smoked in that. But to me, when I was a kid, I think like you just normally do when you, when you're close to someone and you, you'd. You, you admire them so much. You think they're kind of, you know, bulletproof, indestructible. They'll, they'll live on forever. And then he, he passed, and yeah, that really hurt too. And I struggled to deal f- with it for, f- f- um, f- for years. So it's, um, so I I call I call cancer the scourge of the planet. <laughs> uh, and my yeah, my my dad does too. I 
sorry, old fella, but I stole that from you. That that <laughs> saying is cancer is a scourge of the planet. But anyway. Yeah, mate. No, well, no, absolutely, mate. It's not, yeah, it's obviously, as we all know, it's a, it's a really hard thing to deal with. But, um, yeah, just quickly, I was going to say my auntie, yeah, she passed away in her early 50s as well. And I tell that story to people who come in and, and kind of join us here just to help them understand, I suppose, why we do what we do um, and the, the motivation for us behind trying to help people. Because although, yeah, she was a character too and I loved her dearly and was very close with her, but she, she didn't look after herself very well throughout her life. She did smoke, she drank, she didn't really exercise and she really struggled to to get that consistency of looking after herself. And even though cancer was the thing that took her in the end, of course, um, I'm a big believer that her lifestyle choices impacted that as well. Um, and so for me, I think that's another motivation for us helping people to hopefully help them build better habits so that they, fingers crossed, don't have to go through that for themselves, you know? Um, anyway, but yeah. So hope that hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Can, yeah. Uh, can I ask Dan, what was... What was your auntie's name and what, what cancer was it? Uh, her name was Helen. So it was Auntie Helen, but I used to call her Ninny because when I was younger, I could never say Helen when I was a baby, when I was a toddler. So it was always Ninny. Ninny. And I, kept, I called her Ninny as an adult. So people must have been looking at me going, what's this guy's problem over here? Um, so anyway, but yeah, Auntie Helen. Um, so it was, it was bowel cancer uh, in the end. Um, Ooh, got it, but then it, it spread to a brain. She ended up getting brain, yeah. So once it goes up there, it's unfortunately pretty pretty difficult. But um, yeah, bowel cancer, yeah, yep. It's um, I mean, it's all cancers are nasty, but bowel cancer is particularly nasty. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. One of my, uh, one of my, uh, one of my dads, or as I like to call him, old fella or the old man, um. One of his mates um, that he met at work, his current work, he works as an industrial cleaner. He um, he died from bowel cancer and uh, my old man went to saw him just before he passed and he said he, he looked absolutely shocking. And I'm like... Ugh. Yeah, but you know, well, the, good, the good news is you can do things, like there are things you can do to help. Just, just basic things, basic things you can do to help look after yourself to help prevent that stuff from happening to you. Hopefully, you know. So, um, yeah, just some life, like lifestyle, lifestyle factors play a huge part. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, the next question I, I've got for you is kind of our. Um, Is um, as with all my episodes, is my um fun little checkout question. Ooh. But um, <laughs> what do you got for me? Um. Uh, the question is, it's is. Uh, and I, I, I don't think it's. I could be wrong. It's a question when it comes to exercising and. Yep working out at the gym is you know what is your least favorite gym gym exercise oh where do i start uh <laughs> well, that do you know one that comes to mind straight away the rowing machine oh my god get me off that thing i mean it's great for you and everything but oh just there's something about it which my whole body just doesn't agree with <laughs> yeah, you don't oh, like, you don't like the good old rowing machine I, well, I, don't, I don't mind nah. it do you know what? It's the first piece of equipment I ever had at home as a kid. My dad bought me one when I was younger, when I start when I was going through you know the challenges, and he said, "Mate, I'll get your rowing machine. Yeah, you know, start rowing and getting fit and stuff." And I loved it then because it was the first time I'd ever done anything. But um, yeah, if I have to pick, if I'm in a workout here and I need, I, I can pick an exercise like a cardio thing. I'm not going near that. I'm leaving it for someone else. <laughs> what about you? Um, firstly, before that, what's um. If you're gonna hit the cardio, what's um, what uh, what machine are you gonna he head straight for instead of the rower? Ooh, like I enjoy I enjoy running and skipping. I like those things. And if if, if it's a machine that we've I can't got, skip, yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's not for everyone. It's a bit of coordination. It takes a bit of time to master it, I suppose. But 
good for that. Um, but it, machines, mate, are probably what we call the. It's called like it's got a horrible name. It's called an assault bike, or we call it an air bike. But it's like the bike where you push and pull at the same time as yeah, you pedal. Yeah, yeah. I, d- I do like the assault bike. Yeah, it, it kind works. Of, not just your legs, but your, your your arms and shoulders as well. Yeah, and it also fans you off as you do it, so it's even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just <laughs> that's really uh, why it's, I like it's, it. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, this is great. You know, I'm getting cooled off while I'm exercising. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. See, smart mate, wise, wise. That's right. So, yeah, I think that's probably the one I I, I tend to go to the most. Yeah, if I if I am doing it, but. Um, Anyway, cardio is not my natural thing. I enjoy more the strength training side of things, but I know I still need to do the cardiovascular stuff. But um, as we talked about before, am I motivated to do it? No, but I know that, you know, I've got to do it if I want to look after myself for my purpose and what I want to do, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Good questions. Uh, it's funny how you sort of, when, you, when people, not, people say, oh, no, I'm really only interested in the weight training and that and they uh i I was pretty pretty naive with this but i used to think oh you're into weights you know you're big and muscly and strong and that but um like as i've sort of well not sort of but as i've learned more about training and that um you know, you can love weight training, but that that does that, that doesn't mean you're gonna be big muscular wise. Yeah, I mate, I think there's again, it comes back to what you enjoy doing. Like if you if you just want to do weights and that's your thing, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fantastic. Well done. It just means that you know you you might you might be stronger or you might have that that more muscle based things. But it just means if you're not doing anything cardiovascular, then probably your fitness isn't going to be fantastic you know what i mean so it's like anything you've got to work you've got to work the thing to get it better so we always we we always try and and come from the philosophy of you know it's good to do a bit of everything in that sense and incorporating some resistance with some cardiovascular generally if you just want general health be fitter be stronger then that's that's probably the best way to do it and be we're big on variety you know making sure that you're, you're doing things differently to keep things fresh and you know, that's that's really important too. But for those of those guys who just like doing or women who just like doing the strength stuff and that's their passion, no, go for it. Hey, whatever keeps you going at the end of the day is probably the right answer. No, no, no. My preferred training uh preferred style of training now is CrossFit because you're doing the the weights and getting getting stronger, but you've also got the um you've also got the fitness element there too so you can you know you can lift the weights not super heavy weights but you can lift you know you know a good amount of weight for longer than what say maybe a power lifter does you know yep they just you know they go you know boom boom oh, you know you know they deadlift 400 kilos and they they do it once and 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 that's it. Yeah. Um, in saying that, the power lifters like the like the the elite power lifters, they still intimidate me because they're built like you know a brick shit house. <laughs> like you know, I'm going to avoid them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think the well, sorry, the back to the original question, which was what's my least favorite exercise, and that without. An absolute damn well doubt is burpees. I knew you were going to say that. How I, do I know that? That's I, everybody's I, hated I, one. I isn't cannot it? stand burpees. <laughs> yeah, no one likes them. No one likes them. Yeah, they were named after a jap. Uh, no, they were not a jap. I was thinking of something else. They were named after an old, I think, an old corporal in the American Army. His name was someone Burpee. Burpee was his last name. There you go. So he's that's where they come from. This fella invented invented them, so that's why they're called the Burpee. So I think in his training methodologies back in the day, he um, thought that getting down, getting up was really good fitness. And actually is. The burpee, as much as everyone hates it, it actually gets a bad rap, but it's actually got a kind of a, a good functional um, benefit to it. Uh, so it's good for explosive power. It's good for just getting down and getting up, that simple kind of getting down up off the ground. And obviously, yeah, it, it stings the lungs, <laughs> which is why it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> let's be honest. 
but um, but yeah, it's never fun going up and down repetitively, is it? You're like, oh my god, this is horrible. Nah, <laughs> I, I think that I think that I think that's what it is. Is oh, uh, and it doesn't make it uh, any easier when you you know not fit at all. Hundred percent, uh, and you, you you get you you're being asked, you know, to you know jump on the ground and then yep. spring up into the air and. Yep. Uh, I gave them a go, and I'm like, Do you know what? They're nah, not, they're not for everyone. Yeah, there's certain exercises that are good for some people, and there are certain exercises that aren't good for other people, and it depends on where you're at in your journey with that, you know. But yeah, I I, I never used to like um, lunges either. Yep. Yep. But lunges. but that was because of um, like doing my like doing my I was had no problems doing them. Um, stepping left leg forward, um, but right leg forward because it's, I've 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 injured that knee a few times. It just it doesn't like it. Um, it's not not quite as bad now, but it's definitely not a favourite exercise. So it'd probably be burpees and and then lunges. I reckon. Close second. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, all right. I, I, I would, I, I'd like to change Can't that love them all, can we, mate? We can't love them all. Because lunges, like burpees, um, are actually really good for you. Yeah, they do have a benefit. They do have a benefit. Um, but, yeah, that's all right. Love-hate relationship. They love you, but you hate them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, Dan, that's it's 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 been awesome. Thank you very much. Um, again, uh, yeah, thank you very much for agreeing to be a guest speaker on um, the the our our voice our choice podcast. Um, How's it? How's the like uh, experience been for yourself, mate? Thank you. Thanks for inviting me along. I'm always I love talking about health. I'm passionate about it, and mate, what you're doing is fantastic. You know, and so when you when you asked me to come along and get on board, of course I wanted to. So that's why I brought you on board. I know I know you like to talk fitness. Yeah, and, sometimes and I talk too much, so you just you got to tell me to shut up sometimes. But yeah, um, no, no, I love it, mate. I'm very passionate about it. So. Yeah, no, thanks, for, thanks again and thanks for having me, mate. A lot of fun. No, no worries. Again, thank you very much. And um, I hope you um, uh, I hope you and your, your amazing wife, Ali, um, you know, all the, you know, you know, all the good stuff, all the, you know, absolute very best for the future. Um You've got, you've got an exciting and interesting future, sh- short-term future coming up for you is with a, a little one on the way. Um, so, yeah, again, all the very best with all that, and to my, to my um, awesome, awesome listeners, thank you. This is. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated, and I I hope you really enjoyed this this episode. Um, I hope you I hope you guys have a have a have a great weekend, and and a great and very safe Christmas. All right, see you guys. Bye.